I'm going to now share a message about how to have a heart that is prepared to receive from God. And this message is very important for your whole life because God wants to keep pouring more of himself out upon in your life, more of his spirit. It's not one and done. We need more of his spirit. We need healing when we're sick. We need freedom when we're oppressed. Sometimes there's many layers of demonic oppression. Sometimes you may need freedom and more freedom and more freedom. You need the baptism of the Holy Spirit you, to, to be set on fire for God and to help your spirit man be fully spiritual and no more carnal in you, carnal ways in you. Amen? And you need the anointing. You need impartation of anointing to be the vessel God's called you to be, a vessel of his power so he can do whatever he wants to do through you at any time. You're not missing anything. You have his anointing, his power in you. So like all of these things and more, just encounters with God, just uh, um, words he wants to speak to you, prophetic words, uh, encounters he wants to have with you, opening up your, your eyes to his love. These are the many different ways of receiving from God that he wants to be pouring out to you throughout your life. But you need to know how to receive this from God, these things from God. It doesn't just happen automatically. You have to be prepared to receive from him. So this message is going to be so life-changing for your whole life so that every time you come to the house of God, you come to live streams, you come to events, you won't miss out on anything. And I mentioned those things, the house of God, because these are the main places where God releases his spirit, his freedom, his deliverance, his healing, and impartation. Because the fivefold ministry, as it says in Ephesians 4.11, was given to the church to bring equipping to the believers, to build you up, to build you up spiritually. So that means things are going to be released to you by the leaders in the fivefold ministry, in the church, in the house of God. Also, praise God. They must be carrying, fivefold ministers must be carrying a higher level of anointing than what you have because you need to receive from there. Amen? You know, Acts 19.11, it says Apostle, Apostle Paul, it says he was, God was doing extraordinary miracles through the hands of Apostle Paul. Extraordinary. So he was an apostle. So when you come to the house of God, when you come to any time the ministry is taking place, like live streams, the revival events, the, con the Flourish Conference, you're coming to where there is extraordinary anointing, not just for you to look at, but for you to receive from, for you to receive, for it to be poured up to you. Hallelujah. So every time you go to the house of God, you go to ministry where God, where it's a time of ministry, this is your time to receive. And you need to have that attitude that you're not just going to go through the motions. It's another Sunday. It's not another Sunday. It's a new Sunday that the, that, that, that the Lord has made. And it is a new divine appointment with God to receive something fresh and new for your life that you need. I heard so many, I heard so many testimonies last week. Praise God. I heard so many testimonies of how people's lives were changed by the word that God released. Is that, if that's anybody, raise your hand. Wow. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. So this could be the day that your life changes forever. Th that's what happened last Sunday for so many people. This is even before Flourish. This happened. 
We got to be ready to receive continually from God. Amen? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So this word today is, is prophetic. God doesn't want you to miss out, not just every Sunday, but it's, he does not want you to miss out on what he has planned to release this weekend at the Flourish Conference. He wants you to receive everything that he has planned to give you. Not 10%, not 99%, but 100%. And he's planning to release a lot. Woo, hallelujah. <laughs> Matthew 5, 6. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst after the things of God. More of God. The inheritance, to receive his inheritance of abundant life. Freedom, healing, the baptism of the Holy Spirit, impartation. These things are part of the righteousness of God. The pure and holy and good things that God wants you to receive. So when you hunger for these things, when you thirst after these things, God will be faithful and will fill you. Simple. Amen. Bless, uh, Psalm 107.9. For he satisfies the thirsty and fills the hungry with good things. So to be filled by God, to receive from God, we must be hungry and thirsty. This is how to receive from God. Be hungry. To be hungry, to be spiritually hungry, means to have desire to receive from God and faith that God is about to do something in your life. Hungry for freedom, healing, baptism of the Holy Spirit, impartation, more of God, encounter with God. You don't even know, but whatever God wants to release, just more of them. Amen. So I'm going to share with you now how to be hungry because that's the key to receive. Number one, if you're full, empty yourself. Because it says, he, he's, he fills the hungry with good things. So he doesn't fill the full is what that means. So if you're full, he can't fill you. And that's common sense because there's no place to put it, to put his spirit, to put the more of him. What can you be full of that can get in the way? Worldly, carnal things. Relationships that are carnal, that are taking up space and energy and time and focus, that God isn't called you to have this relationship and it's taking up space. Where a spiritual relationship doesn't take up space of the things of God. It's part of God filling you. Hallelujah. You can also be full of carnal activities, carnal entertainment, filling the void of God with other things that are taking your attention. It could be. Social media is a big one. It could be social media. Maybe sometimes you feel lonely. Sometimes you feel bored. That, what that is, is it's a hunger. What we want is, for, is to make that hunger be a spiritual hunger rather than a hunger for anything you can find quickly to fill it. Amen? But what many people do is they are lazy, they're impatient, and they find this hunger, they find this void, and they search for the quick fix. So you need to identify where you are filling yourself 
up with the wrong things. Where it's taking your energy, it's taking your time, and it's, it's draining you. And it's your, your day is so full, you don't even have time to read the word. Your day is so full, you don't even have time to talk with God, spend time with God. Your day is so full that you just go through the motions. Oh, it's time for Sunday. Oh, it's time for the live stream. And you just tune in and then peace out. And then you're back to filling yourself with worldly things. So you need to empty yourself of what is taking the place of God. You need to empty yourself so you can get to this place of hunger and emptiness. So God can fill you with himself. What a shame it would be when God has such amazing things like the day of Pentecost planned for you, but you're doing nothing to prepare for it. You're going through the motions. You are on social media every spare second of your life when you're not working. Every single second you are, you are filling it with the wrong things and you show up to the conference not prepared. You show up full with no place for God to put, it, put anything. And you see other people receiving mightily and you wonder why. Because you didn't empty yourself. You need to also empty yourself of old wine, old wineskin, religious doctrine, and anything that's getting in the way of you receiving the new thing that God wants to release. This is one of the big stumbling blocks of people where they're not hungry and they don't receive is that they're full of religious, wrong doctrine, old wine. God's main way of releasing his spirit, impartation, deliverance, healing, his word is through his vessels, his true anointed vessels, his vessels who are in the new wine. We are in revival now, hallelujah. And God is raising up new, weak, and foolish vessels that are usually discounted by many that are seen as strange and weird. Why would God use this person? But he chose them just as he chose David, just as he chose Jesus from Nazareth, just as, he chose the, just as Jesus chose the disciples that were fishermen and tax collectors nobody's average Joe's people with a bad past. That's who God is choosing now. And this is the new wine. And the new wine's going to come forth out of these vessels. But if you are full of the old wine, you can't receive the new wine. The, Jesus says that when you put new wine into an old wine skin, the new wine expands and the old wine skin cannot be flexible anymore. And so it will break and the wine will spill. So that's a good metaphor to show you how you come to the house of God. Other people are receiving mightily. They are receiving the new wine. They are full of the new wine. And their new wine skin can hold it. And they are transformed. And they are full of the spirit. But then others, they come with their old wine skin. They come and they hear the word and they say, no, that's heresy. No, that's strange. No, I'm offended. I don't get it. This seems wrong. I'm out. And they, everything that just came at them was spilled instead of kept. So you have to empty yourself out of whatever's getting in the way of you receiving the new wine. All of this wrong, skeptical, critical thinking about the vessel God's using, that's going to hold you back. That's, that's you being full, so God has no place to put it. Amen? So how to be hungry, how to be hungry. First, we learned we need to empty ourselves if we're full already. Secondly, the main way of how to be hungry is to see in the spiritual realm. 
is to allow God to open up your spiritual eyes. Then the hunger will come. Uh, so, do, have, you ever, have you ever experienced that you didn't eat for like two to three hours? You know how we usually get hungry like three hours after eating or four hours? But it can depend, right? Depends on the day. Like someday, sometimes you're like, wow, it's been like five hours since I ate. I'm not hungry yet. Oh, wow. Right? It's different. So have you ever experienced where it's been maybe a few hours since you've eaten and you're not hungry at all? And then maybe you walk into a house or a restaurant that's prepared this delicious food and it smells so good and it looks so good. And all of a sudden, in an instant, you're starving. Have you experienced that? When you see, when you can see, then you will be hungry. When you can see what's there, what's available for you, what God has prepared for you. He's prepared this for you on this table for you to receive the most amazing food, spiritual food, nourishment. You get hungry. Hallelujah. <laughs> so you need to see in the spiritual realm for the hunger to come. Exit, uh, the, the eyes communicate with spiritual hunger. Just like the eyes, when you see the food, it communicates to your stomach. Get ready to eat this delicious meal that I've just seen. <laughs> That's how it is in the spiritual realm. Exodus 33, 20. But he said, you cannot see my face for no man can see me and live. So before Jesus came in the Old Testament, we find that there wasn't able to be this direct contact with God. There had to be a mediator. There had to be a priest that would go to God on your behalf. And these priests, they would have to be first of all anointed, then like chosen by God, not just anybody. And then they had to be consecrated, like they had to be so purified, just follow the law perfectly so that they were prepared to enter into the presence of God. And when they were prepared, consecrated, pure, had the right robes on, when they came into the Holy of Holies, the, the truest presence of God, they wouldn't die. But so this verse is saying, if you're not a priest prepared like this, but you're just a layman, you're just a regular person, and you try to enter in the Holy of Holies, you, you can't take it, you'll die. Like the presence of God is so strong that you, you'll just die. Jesus changed that. So now we can be intimate with God and there's no need, no need for a mediator. <laughs> Hallelujah. And Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit actually chooses to live inside of you. So the presence of God is actually inside of you. Wow. And we are with God always. The, 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 his, his presence closest of close is to God is where we are at always. Hallelujah. But this this Old Testament verse, you know, Exodus, it's saying you can, in the Old Testament, when you see, when you see God, you, you, your physical body can't take it. Like your physical body will die. It, your physical body is what can't take it. It's too much glory. Um, and so in the spiritual realm, when you see someone fall down with the power of God, it's that their physical body can't take the presence of God. Now we don't die, but our carnal nature dies when we see God. When, when a person comes to, to the house of God and the presence of God, the anointing, and they believe 
God is here. God is moving in power. I'm going to receive from God today. I'm going to receive deliverance. I'm going to receive healing. I'm going to receive something. When you come with that faith, that is actually the action of seeing in the spiritual realm. That's the action of seeing. It's like you are living in the truth. You are seeing the spiritual truth. This isn't just any church. The power of God is in this church. This isn't just any Sunday service. This is revival breaking out. This this isn't just another Sunday. This is the day of my deliverance, my healing. A day that will change my life forever because of what I received from God today. Today, I have a divine appointment with God. I'm not just sitting there in the congregation listening to a message. No, this is my divine appointment. God called me here for this precious divine holy meeting as if it was just me and him. So when you have that faith, it's really that you are seeing rightly. You are seeing the real truth, the realer truth beyond all truths. Yes, it's truth that um, we are in the city of Los Angeles. It is truth that we are in a building, the Belasco Theater right now. It is truth that I'm standing on a stage. No one can argue with these things, right? But so many can argue about the existence and the love and the power of Jesus. But really, all things of Jesus, all, all it says in his word, that's even more real than all the things I just described that everybody agrees on and can see physically, right? So when you come here with that revelation, that knowing, that faith, a strong faith, you are seen rightly. Just like how you see me on the stage right now, just how you go outside and you see the green light and the red light, you are seen God, you are seen in the spiritual realm. I'm not talking about visions. It can be that sometimes, but I'm talking about faith. That's how you see in the spiritual realm. Hallelujah. And, and that's how hunger will come. So when you see God spiritually, your carnal nature will diminish and your spirit will rise. Your flesh will die. When you see God, you access the supernatural. So when you see God, your flesh will die, your spirit will rise, and you will behold the glory of God. So when someone, when someone who is skeptical, when they come to the house of God, when they come here, most likely they will not fall back with the power of God. Most likely they will not have a big encounter with Jesus and receive miracles. Because there's no place for God to put anything. Because they are not seen in the spiritual realm. There's no hunger. So instead they're looking around, is this real? I don't know about this. Is this fake? Is this real? And they're not seeing anything of the spiritual truth. But when you can come here and see the spiritual reality and see God, I believe, I know I will receive from God today. That person many times will fall back with the power of God. Their physical body is, it cannot even stand. That's what happens when someone falls back with the power of God. They are experiencing so much of the glory of God. Sometimes it's deliverance taking place where the power of God is coming upon the person, evicting the demon. So it's so much power coming that you can't even stand. Hallelujah. And you do not need to fall back with the power of God to have an encounter with God. In fact, I've only fell down one time 
And that was when I received impartation from my spiritual father. And everything changed from there. And that's coming back from that time was where I saw the power of God move in our church and Fivefold Church for the first time. Prophetic anointing was moving and touching people so powerfully. People were falling back with God's power, being baptized in the Holy Spirit. And then, if, and then the anointing grew. I continued to receive impartation. And a few years, few years later, the first demon manifested and was cast out. And deliverance revival broke out. Amen? So you don't need, I don't say that to be like, you need to fall back with the power of God. No, 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 no. I'm just saying that's an example. That's an example of how we can really see what's happening when someone, when someone sees God, they can't live. When someone sees God, their carnal nature can't stand it. So, so that can be, um, you know, receiving the baptism of the Holy Spirit, maybe. You are so focused on God. You are seeing him rightly. And all of a sudden, the fire of the Holy Spirit comes upon you, overtakes your tongue, and you can't control it. You are completely in the spirit. And your carnal nature has, is gone <laughs> for a moment. Completely in the spirit. Praise God. <laughs> Hallelujah. So sometimes there's that physical example, like I'm sharing with you, like speaking in tongues or falling back. But many times you won't feel anything, but you'll be receiving. You won't feel anything, but you are seen spiritually. And so therefore you are hungry, you are empty, and God has some place to put it, and you receive. And so you may not feel anything. You don't fall back. You don't feel fire. You don't feel anything physically, but you have received just as much as someone who did feel something. Amen? Praise God. So how now do we see in the spirit and have hunger? This is the second key of how to receive, how to see in the spirit and how to have hunger. Desire to be in the spirit more than in the natural world. Acts 2.1, when the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Holy Spirit enabled them. Verse 5, now they were staying in Jerusalem, God-fearing, now there were, now there were staying in Jerusalem, God-fearing Jews from every nation under heaven. When they heard this sound, a crowd came together in bewilderment because each one heard their own language being spoken. Fast forwarding down to verse 13, some, however, made fun of them and said, they have had too much wine. So they were appearing to be drunk as they were speaking in tongues, and not just speaking in tongues, but overcome with what they have received from the Holy Spirit. They were so much in the spiritual realm that they were like not even aware of their surroundings. They were not even aware how they were looking, how they were acting, and they looked drunk to people who didn't have understanding of the spiritual things. They were looking goofy. They were looking supernaturally joyful. That the only way they could describe it is, is drunk. So you want to receive like they did on the day of Pentecost? You need, you need to desire to be more in the spirit than in the natural. You need to be like, I want that. I don't care that I'm gone from the natural world. I don't care about my surroundings, how I look, nothing. I want that. You need to not care how people see you. Amen? And, you know, we see... 
1 Samuel 1.10, in her deep anguish, Hannah prayed to the Lord. Hannah was barren. She couldn't have children. And she prayed to the Lord, weeping bitterly. Now, basically, Hannah was sensing from the Holy Spirit, sensing from God, that God could do a miracle and give her a baby. She believed this was a desire from God. This desire in her heart was from God and that God wanted to fulfill that desire. So she began to pray for this miracle. She made a vow saying, Lord Almighty, if you only look on your servant's misery and remember me and not forget your servant, but give her a son, then I will give him to the Lord for all the days of his life and no razor will ever be used on his head. As she kept on praying to the Lord, Eli observed her mouth. Hannah was praying in her heart, and her lips were moving, but her voice was not heard. Eli thought she was drunk and said to her, how long are you going to stay drunk? Put away your wine. Not so, my Lord, Hannah replied. I am a woman who is deeply troubled. I have not been drinking wine or beer. I was pouring out my soul to the Lord. Hallelujah. So she didn't care about her surroundings. She didn't care that Prophet Eli was going to see her. Other people were going to see her praying. She was completely in the spirit. She really believed God is hearing me right now. And my words, my, my prayers carry power. That if I ask, I, if I ask, seek, and knock, I will receive from God. And so I really believe this word. I believe this is from God, this desire. So I believe this is the action of me receiving this miracle right now. And I believe I'm receiving this miracle right now as I ask. So she was completely in the spirit. Completely in the spiritual realm. Full of faith. So we need to stop caring about being dignified. You know, I look great. Everyone sees me looking great and dignified. And then, but, but to, to fall back with the power of God, it's like you are un, even unable to stand, to stand up. That's very undignified. And that's a beautiful, humbling thing that God does. Hallelujah. (laughs) To be swept in the spirit, to be speaking in tongues, it sounds like gibberish and foolishness to some people. But we don't care. We don't care. Some people may may see us across the world, but we know that by, by us receiving God's power, eyes are opening up to God's reality his love, his power, and they are receiving faith across the world as they see God touch us in power. So it's not just about me receiving, it's about how God can use my testimony to touch others, how God can use this encounter that me and God are having to touch so many lives, to lift faith in so many people so that they can then have an encounter with God and receive miracles. So this is the kind of heart that we should have we are ready to be undignified. We are ready. We don't know what it's going to look like, but we don't care how it looks like. We, we don't care if we look like Hannah. We don't care if we look like the people on the day of Pentecost. We don't care if people think we look drunk. They accuse, of, accuse us of things. We don't care. We just want to receive from God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So you got to get out of your head. Get out of your head when you come to the house of God. It's carnal to be thinking to the people to your left and right and how people will see me. And Get out of that carnal mind and put your eyes to Jesus and say, Lord, have your way. I'll be undignified for you. Whatever it looks like, I want to receive you. Amen?
So this is the third key to how to be hungry and specifically how to see in the spirit. We learn now the, we learn the importance of how to see in the spirit, but how to see in the spiritual realm, really. Romans 12, 21, I believe it is. 12, 2. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. To see in the spirit is to be transformed. To see in the spirit is to be transformed. To see in the spirit is not like one day, poof. You woke up and you could just see. To see in the spiritual realm comes by you doing your part of renewing your mind. As you renew your mind, God transforms you. As you renew your mind to the word of God, you become more like Jesus. You become more like his, his mind. Like Jesus is 100% thinking spiritually, 100% seeing spiritually. That's how Jesus is. And right now, you might be like 5% seeing spiritually, 5% thinking spiritually. And then you, you renew your mind, and then God transforms you. Now you are seeing like 10% spiritually. And you keep renewing your mind, and then transformation comes as you renew your mind. So what I mean is this truth that God has spoken. God has spoken. It is going to be like the day of Pentecost. As we come all together in unity, all in one accord, God is going to honor that. God has planned something so special and rare and unique and extra powerful at this conference where he's going to release his spirit and bring freedom from the demonic oppression that's been holding you back, that's been keeping you stuck, and you will receive abundant life. You will receive impartation of anointing to be the powerful vessel of God God has intended you to be and to flourish, to flourish in your calling, in your purpose. This is what God has spoken, that this will happen. And, and, and this, this word, you know it's the word of God, for example, because you, you believe, like, for me, me to be your spiritual leader. You know, you've seen fruits. You've seen the fruits in your own life. You tasted the fruits in your own life. So you know the word that was released in the house of God, in the church I am planted in, it's the word of God. It's not the leader's feeling, but this, like, the, the, the leader's hope, what the leader wants. It's God speaking. <laughs> Hallelujah. So... You renew your mind with the word of God. Renew your mind with the word of God. Such as God gave apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers to equip the body. You renew your mind with the word of God, seeing how God spoke through apostles. He spoke through apostle Paul, through apostle Peter. He spoke through prophets. He spoke through true anointed vessels. And he's still speaking today. You go in the word and you... You renew, you renew your mind with the word showing how God speaks through vessels. And God is speaking through a vessel now. And this is what God has said. God, receive it as if God spoke it to you. Jesus came to you face to face. You know, I mean, if Jesus came to you face to face and said, I'm going to release my spirit upon you like never before on April 26th and April 27th in Los Angeles, California at the Orpheum Theater. This is my present day, day of Pentecost. I'm calling you to get there. If, hallelujah. 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 If Jesus spoke that, to, if Jesus came here right now, physical form, and spoke that to you, how would you be acting? 
right now. Right now. Yeah. I mean, you couldn't help but be so hungry and excited. Because you've seen and heard the spiritual truth. And so you know God, Jesus doesn't lie. This is going to happen. This is definitely going to happen. So the hunger, the expectancy just comes. When you can see rightly. So this is how you see. Go in the word of God. Renew your mind. God uses apostles today. God said he was going to pour out his spirit upon all flesh in the last days. These are the days. These are the days. He said we should be expectant for this. This is the day, April 26th, 27th. The spirit of God is going to come upon the, the God's pouring out his spirit upon sons and daughters, as he said in the word. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And go throughout the word. Go through the, the gospels and the book of Acts and find stories that, of Jesus healing and delivering everyone who came to him. See, renew your mind. Jesus truly delivers. And Jesus wants to deliver every one of his people who comes to him. This is what he did in the word. This is what he's doing now. And I, I renew my mind with the word of God I'm seeing today, the rhema present tense word of God today, the hundreds and thousands of testimonies that I have now heard. I go back and watch those testimonies. I renew my mind with the word of God today. And I watch those testimonies. God delivered this person. God delivered this person of this, this person of schizophrenia, this person of addiction, this person of anxiety, this person of depression, this person of night terrors, this person of cancer, this person of, of, of not being able to hear, this child of not being able to speak, this child of having autism. He healed and delivered them all. So God's going to do that for me. On April 26th and 27th, God's going to do it to me. The testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. Renew your mind with that word of God. I receive this prophecy of this deliverance through this testimony upon my life. I will be delivered too. And I am going to receive impartation. Renew your mind with the word of God. Renew your mind. Go to the stories of Elijah and Elisha. Elisha receiving the mantle from Elijah as he was humble, surrendered, faithful as a servant. Renew your mind with the story of Apostle Paul releasing, his impart releasing impartation to Timothy and his spiritual children. And, and you renew your mind. This is what I'm doing. I'm, I, I, I'm positioning myself under my spiritual mother that God called me to, to position myself under. Just, just as Timothy positioned himself under Paul. Praise God. Someone's seeing in the spirit right now. Somebody's seeing in the spiritual realm right now. You don't got to wait till the end. You don't got to wait till, till ministry time. You don't got to wait till the end of the sermon. This is not just today. This is not just this weekend. This is every Sunday. You can fall down with the power of God in the middle of the sermon. Be undignified and receive whenever God wants to pour, pour himself onto you. Amen? Hallelujah. This is revival. This is what church should look like. This is a church alive. This is a church fully in the spirit, seen in the spiritual realm. This is a church on fire. Hallelujah. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! You believe the present tense word of God being spoken. Being spoken at the church through your leader. God wants to anoint you in his power. You hear testimonies. Testimonies of impartation like Pastor Heather. You hear testimonies of impartation that has happened in this house. And you believe this word that God wants to anoint you all. You renew your mind with the word of God. All who believe these signs shall follow them. They shall heal the sick. They shall cast out demons. You, you renew your mind with the word of God. You will do the things I did and greater. 
you, you go to the word of God and renew your mind and you will be transformed. The way transformation takes place is by you obeying God. God says, do this, like go to the word of God, renew your mind, read the word of God. Don't just go through the motions, really read it. And when you read it, oh yes, you remember. Oh yes, this is, this is the truth. Not the lies I was believing from the devil in my head. This is the truth. This is the truth. And so you go from maybe most of the time thinking wrongly, forgetting what you've learned, forgetting the spiritual truth. You then go from thinking rightly. When you obey God, what hap- it doesn't matter if you feel like obeying him or not. When you obey God, You go into the word of God instead of listening to the lies of the devil. You go into the word of God. Whenever you obey him, so you you go to the word of God, that's the action of giving him permission to take his hands upon your heart and transform you to be more spiritual, to be more like him. That's how the transformation takes place. It's not about feeling it. It's simply about obeying. You obey, God puts his hand in and transforms you in that area that you obeyed him in. So if you are not naturally patient, you don't feel like being patient, but God's asking you to be patient, asking you to be patient, and then you are patient to someone just out of obedience, immediately you've just changed. Immediately God has put his hand in you, rewarded you, put his hand upon your heart, and made your heart more patient. And so because of that obedience, you've literally changed. You're not the same. That's how we are transformed. And so you want to see in the spirit, get in the word of God and renew your mind. Don't just read it, meditate on it. Don't just meditate on it as you read it. Meditate on it every day throughout the days. In your car, meditate on the word of God. Bring to remembrance the word of God, the written word of God and the spoken word of God. Bring it to remembrance. Bring it to remembrance. Every time you're bringing it to remembrance, it's what you, you're, it's the action of God wiping away the carnal mindset, wiping it away and, in, and enforcing and in reinforcing what you put in there, the spiritual truth. It becomes stronger. It stays. So when you keep doing that, you get to the point where you don't have to try to think spiritually. It comes natural. Because you are, tra- you are seen in the spirit. You're not just seen in the spirit when you take the action to renew your mind. You don't even have to renew your mind. You're living in the truth. So this is the biggest key of how to see in the spirit and therefore be hungry and be ready to receive from God. Renew your mind. Renew your mind to the truth. Bring it to remembrance. Meditate on it. Speak it aloud. This is you living in the truth and seeing the truth. And it's not about a feeling. Probably you'll feel it. I see some of you feel energetic now. It's because you received in the spirit and it transcended to your soul and then your body. So that's how you get to be on fire for God. It starts with obedience. And then the soul has to follow, and then the body has to follow. And then you'll naturally feel more on fire. But you don't need to worry about the feeling that will come. Even when it comes to be on Sunday or even the conference, don't worry about, who I'm feeling. Because some people will probably be like, woo, I feel the fire. And you're just like, oh, I don't think I'm on that level. I hope I still receive you will receive. It's not about a feeling. It's about the spiritual sight. It's about what you see, what you believe, the truth you're living in. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Wow. Woo. The fire of the spirit is already here. Woo. Woo. Acts 17, 10, this is the fourth key of how to receive, how to be in the spirit. 
how to be hungry. Acts 17, 10, the Passion Translation. That night, the believers sent Paul and Silas off to the city of Berea, where they, were, where, where they once again went into the synagogue. They found that the Jews of Berea were more, of more noble character and much more open-minded than those of Thessalonica. They were hungry to learn and eagerly received the word. All right, so we want to be like the Jews, the, the, the people of Berea. All right, so, so they were set apart. They were different. Um, they, not everyone is going to be like you. Especially in the beginning stage of this revival that God's brought. Not everyone is surely going to be like you. In the times of Jesus, Jesus had come. The disciples had come. Many disciples were coming. People were receiving healing and deliverance and revival. The Messiah had come. And the Jews, the, the, the Pharisees were going on as business as usual. The Pharisees were completely missing out. Completely. And not just that, they were calling Jesus false. Not only were they missing out, they were calling what was truly God, false. All right, so you got to be aware of this. You got to be aware there will be people who will not be like you. There will be people who do not understand. Why are you so passionate about this revival, this ministry? Why are you spending so much time serving and da da, da? Why are you traveling across the world? You don't even have much money. Why are you spending all this money traveling across the world to go to this conference? There will be those people for sure. As it was in these times, it will be in these times today. In the Bible times, it will be in these times today as well. So we need to be aware of that and understand that and not let that get to us and have this desire for God to see us like how God and Paul saw the people of Berea. That we are of noble character, that we are spiritual, pure, humble, different, set apart, hungry, ready to receive. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we got to be okay. I love this song. The song that we sing today was so prophetic. They may call me crazy, but they can't take him from me. They may call me crazy, but they can't take him from me. They may call you crazy, but they can't take what God's going to give you from you. Hallelujah. We got to be okay with being a Jesus freak. Crazy, wild for Jesus. Woo! Woo! Unashamed, undignified, crazy for Jesus. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Let us be different. Let us be wild. Let us be on fire. Let us capture the attention of heaven with the way that Jesus burns in our heart. God will see us and he will come and pour his spirit upon us. He will honor this hunger. There's such a great reward for being hungry and being surrendered. Such a great award, reward awaits. This is what's coming. This is what's coming. This coming weekend. Are you ready to receive? Hallelujah. 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 You will receive like never before. The, the God gave me this scripture for what's coming this weekend. Now to him 
who does exceedingly abundantly beyond anything we could ask, dream, imagine, or believe or pray for, God's going to do it. He's going to exceed your expectations. Just believe. Don't leave anything on the table. Come empty. Come hungry. Come with your eyes open. See God. Come and see God and be changed forever. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Say, Jesus. I'm ready. I'm hungry. I see you. I believe in you. In your power to heal me, to deliver me, to anoint me. I receive it. I receive it all. Hallelujah. 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 Jesus. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, God, we are so hungry and expectant and excited. God, we thank you for this favor upon us that you are putting upon us. Thank you for this favor that you would bring this great move of God to our city. Thank you, Jesus, for all that you have planned to do. Thank you, Jesus, for all the people you will deliver. Thank you, Jesus, for all the people you will anoint with your power. Thank you, Jesus, for every life, every, all of the many hundreds that come, every life will be changed forever. Thank you, Jesus, for what you have planned to do. And we surrender to you and we say, have your way. We are ready. We are hungry. We desire you. We desire all of you. Go, do exactly what you want to do, God. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You can have a seat. Galatians 6, 7 says, do not be deceived. God cannot be mocked. A man reaps what he sows. Whoever sows to please their flesh, from the flesh will reap destruction. Whoever sows to please the spirit, from the spirit will reap eternal life. When you renew your mind with the word of God, you will see in the spirit. You will really believe the word of God. You will know the word of God is truth. And then you will be able to follow the word of God. You will really take it to heart. You will take it as instruction, direction for your life, for you to walk in abundance, for you to be free, healed, and walk in God's calling for your life. This is how you will see the word of God. You will see it differently when you can see spiritually, see it accurately, the revelation will deepen. And so this scripture, it says, whatever you, whatever you sow, you will reap. It says, if you sow to please your flesh from the flesh, you will reap. Whoever sows to please the spirit from the spirit, they will reap. So a big part of being in the spirit, being prepared for God to, to pour upon you is not just seeing the word accurately, but doing the word, living the word. It's not just, you know, being able to recite the scriptures 24-7 throughout the day, <laughs> but to live the word, live out the word, apply the word. And so this scripture right here God is asking you to live out this word today. To, to sow into this anointed ground, believing you are going to reap from this anointed ground in your life. God is asking you to sow a seed specifically for what he has planned to release to you on this weekend at the Flourish Conference. 
It's free what God is releasing. It doesn't cost anything, his miracles. Amen. The tickets were to help provide for the, the cost of the, the, the several, almost pretty much, almost $100,000 it takes for the whole conference. It takes a lot to put on a conference. Amen. It does. The, a, a building that fits 2, 000, about 2,000 people and all that goes into it. So the tickets just to cover that, the tickets not to receive miracles. The miracles from God are free, amen? And if you cannot afford the ticket, we have people donating tickets, so email us if you cannot afford the ticket for the conference. Um, but the miracles that God has in store for you are free. But we shouldn't treat them as cheap, the miracles from God, amen? Though they're free, we shouldn't treat them the way we treat free things. Because free things you naturally ch treat as cheap, right? Just automatically, that's how it is. But something that costs a lot, you, you give more value, right? So we need to make sure we're valuing what God releases to us, the miracles. One of the ways that we value is to sow, to say, Lord, I know this is free, but I want to give a sacrifice and thank you, to thank you in advance for what you're going to release to me. Because this isn't cheap. This isn't not valuable. This is so valuable that I want to sow into your kingdom to give a sacrifice to you and touch your heart. Amen. So I encourage you today, this seed is a seed for what God has planted, for what God has in store for you, for what he has planned to release to you. This seed will help you to receive and help you to maintain it so you don't treat it as cheap. Amen. If you'd like to sow into the work at Fivefold Church, into this house, you can go to 5fchurch.org slash give if you want to give online. We have a QR code. We have envelopes on the chairs. If you're watching online, go to the link in my bio if you're watching on Instagram or 5fchurch.org slash give. If you're make, writing checks, make sure, they're, make sure you make them out to 5F Church, the number 5, 5F Church. And please don't ever mail any mail to wherever we're meeting physically, like the Belasco Theater. Only mail anything, like, like uh, offering, for example, to our P.O. Box which is listed at 5fchurch.org slash give and also on the envelopes here. Lift your offering up right now, your, your phone or your, your seed. Thank you, Jesus. Upon this seed, I declare that everything that God has planned to release to you, you would receive it, you would keep it, it would be a val valuable to you. Nothing would take it from you. With this seed, may, these, may this anointing be released upon you. With this seed, let there be no more lack in your life. Those of you that still need provision, you still need provision, you still need doors to open up. I speak these doors to open. I speak this provision to come to you in Jesus' name. Those of you watching online, you need visas still. You need doors to open up for you to get to the conference. I declare these doors to open up now. I declare supernatural favor upon you, the visas to be approved and released to you. And I speak a smooth traveling for, in favor of God over you for traveling here in Jesus' name. I declare nothing can keep any one of you, anybody watching online, from coming and receiving from God at the Flourish Conference. I speak victory over every single one of you now in Jesus' name. Amen.